I'm sure you get what I mean now when I said that in theory, this mod might be more dramatic than the other mod, the F1 1998 mod. Because, I mean, it's touring cars, touring car drivers, at the very least British touring cars, it's got a reputation for being a contact sport and for quite some um, questionably dirty moves being made in touring cars. But, on the positive side, the cars are slower than Formula 1 cars, so it might well be less dramatic than we saw with the Formula 1 cars, but to be honest, I don't think it can be more dramatic. But anyway, this mod, this mod is brilliant, because it's based off of the 2003 European Touring Car Championship season, because I couldn't find a decent British Touring Car Championship mod. It's got all the cars that were used in the actual European Touring Car Championship season, including the very British BMW, which is an oxymoron, but um, sure, it may be a German car, but it's got Andy Prio. He's representing the British Touring Car Championship. And that BMW, sure, it may be a BMW, but it looks very patriotically British. Not only are there all the cars that were used in the 2003 European Touring Car Championship mod season, along with cars which the mod developers have put themselves in, and the independent runners, you've also got the extra cars, and these are very interesting. You got this one, Michael Schumacher, he's back. Michael Schumacher, yes, he's in an Alfa Romeo. I looked this up, and it's because he did one test session, or one sort of, I think it's more of a PR event than anything else, really, but, I mean, the point is, is Michael Schumacher, he did race in this car, or he did drive this car at least once in, I believe, 2002. Then you've also got this one. Yep, it's the car I thought it is. Kelvin Burt driving the Finding Nemo car. Look at that. That is, um, well, I'll be honest, it may be Finding Nemo, but it looks quite good. It certainly is striking, to be honest, but, um, yeah, a clownfish Alfa Romeo driven by Kelvin Burt. That's, um, that's a very interesting but quite nice combination. And not just that, if you click on Honda and click on the Pro Motorsport Special, Valentino Rossi. There you go. I don't quite know why he's in this. I assume maybe like Michael Schumacher, he did some sort of test session, a one-off test session. But either way, we've got the MotoGP legend, Valentino Rossi. And um, yeah, this is going to be a very interesting race because we have got a lot of big names. The question is, is which car am I going to drive? Now, I am slightly drawn by the Skoda Octavia. Now, we have got the Skoda Octavia here being driven by Gianni Morbidelli, and I could replace him. And I might as well, to be honest, because Gianni Morbidelli, in my Grand Prix Manager 2 series, which I'm currently doing, managing Jordan, I did actually sack Morbidelli. So I don't think he'll be too happy to see me. He'll probably ram me off the road, actually. So that would be an incentive to replace him, but I don't know. To be honest, I'm quite drawn to the Skoda, just because it is different and it looks quite good. And also, weirdly, I mean, when I went to school, I knew someone whose favourite car, or certainly one of their favourite cars, for some reason, was a Skoda Octavia. But then again, to be honest, if you're going on that logic, I also used to go to school with someone who was a massive fan of Audi, to be honest. Like, a really big fan of Audi. And you know what, for that reason and that reason alone, just because I used to go to school with someone who is a massive fan of Audi, I'm going to drive in this Audi Sport Audi A4. Right then, this is a little bit worrying. We've done nearly 18 minutes of qualifying, there's 26 drivers, and currently only 6 have set qualifying lap times. Michael Schumacher's leading proceedings from James Thompson, good old Tarquini, Gabriella Tarquini, uh, Yvan Muller, Jordi Genet, and then myself. It's because everyone else is here. Or, hang on, who was that? There's an Alfa Romeo. Okay, I mean, this is just... I don't know how they're all getting stuck behind the fence. I want to work out... I mean, look at them. There's, there's loads of them there. I mean, that's just ridiculous. I don't know how they got there. And, I mean, I'm just... Well, I'm confused and amazed. Right, I think I'm going to have to click finish session, which I've done. And, oh, okay. Okay, well, this time, conversely to what happened... Last time, um, this time I clicked finish session and most people went quicker. Why Michael Schumacher is now down to 17th, I'm probably in last. Yep, I am, I'm in last, although my teammate is joining me right towards the back, Frank Beeler. We're going to make up the 13th row of the grid. 
Right then, here we go. So it's myself and Frank Beeler. We've got a couple of BMWs up ahead. Moulinar. What a name that is. Moulinar. And what a brilliant start I've got. I've overtaken a load of people. And already I'm up into 20th place. We've got Jordi Genet in the Seat Toledo. A couple of Alfa Romeos. I've just been rear-ended. Someone's gone. Is that Valentino Rossi? It is. Valentino Rossi is the first one to go up on two wheels. Why am I not surprised? So I'm up into 19th place now, as it stands. Okay, and is this the corner where... Well, this looks interesting. Hang on. I just saw my rearview mirror. I just saw a couple of people... Well, I mean, they won two wheels and then they just went flying, so who knows really what happened. Right then, so let's take a look. So we're having a look at Valentino Rossi's Honda Civic to find out exactly what he did, because it's not a massively quick car he's in. But I think it was... Hang on, did they get hit by the BMW, or... They recovered in a pretty touring car-ish way. Well, I wonder if we can ride with Valentino Rossi to sort of see what else happened ahead, because there were a lot of people who went rolling over, like Rossi did just then. Oh my god, he did it again! He literally did it again! How stupid do you have to be to roll over twice in a space of, what, four corners? I don't know, but Rossi did it. I mean, maybe he's too used to being on two wheels. I don't know. I'll tell you what, though. Finding Nemo was able to make it unscathed. There's Kelvin Burt, who's right behind this Alfa Romeo, who... There was no contact there. No contact. That's what I was trying to establish. No contact, yet... Cars are rolling over. So then let's take another look at this Alfa Romeo that went over. I mean, he wasn't unique in this. Oh, it's an Italian flag I saw there, so it's not Michael Schumacher. But, um, oh, right, I'm seeing the issue as well. There's a fence there. So this guy, Valentino Rossi, all the others that went over, because there was quite a few that went over the fence, because they rolled over the fence as well. I don't think... I don't think you can drive over the fence, but if you get air... Oh, it's Tarquini! Through the chicane! And oh! Oh! Off! It's Tarquini! Tarquini, he went over the fence, right, yeah. The fence is too high to drive over, but if you get some air, you're able to roll over it. So then, I'm going to start this race again to see if we can avoid any chaos happening while we go around that corner. No, we can't. Whoa. I nearly got taken out there. No, we can't avoid the chaos. No, you just can't. Apparently, it's an inevitable part of racing these cars around this track. Moulinar, what are you doing? It's a full course yellow. I understand that you don't consider it to be a full course yellow till we cross the start finish line, but please. Please. Right, I can't really blame that on Moulinar. That was my fault, but I mean, the safety car is out. It's a full course yellow, yet. Oh. Fantastic. Hang on, loads of people are coming into the pits. Okay, so now I need to stay behind Nicola Larini. Right, I had a look at some names there. Michael Schumacher is still in the race. I saw someone else. Oh, Andy Prio. Yeah, that's who it is. Andy Prio, he's in 12th. So we still got a lot of big names. But to be honest, I don't really know who's retired. Or, well, to put it more accurately, who's stuck behind the fence. Right, now they're all coming into the pits once again. So does that mean... Does that mean I'm leading? Yes, I'm leading this... Grand Prix. Actually, where is the safety car? Why Why am I meant to be behind Morbidelli? I don't get it. Okay, well now I am behind Morbidelli because he's just overtaken me, so... Well, I'm trying to be in the game's good books here, but it wants me to be behind seemingly everyone. Right then, okay, away we go. Apparently I'm meant to be behind Moulinar, but screw that. Morbidelli, I think he might well be coming into the pits. A green flag is still is saying to be behind Morbidelli. Please don't give me a penalty. No, okay, so I was fine to just be behind Morbidelli the entire time. Wow, what a move. That was completely unintentional. But there you go, I've taken the lead of the race. So it's myself and Morbidelli, Rickard Rydell, Michael Schumacher, Tavano. So, you know, some big names we got behind me here. I mean, I recognise all of them apart from Tavano. And please don't tell me Morbidelli's going to go. Oh, nice nudge. He actually nudged me as he went over. Rekha Rydell's gone. I think 
I can see a red Alfa Romeo still out on track. Yes, Michael Schumacher is still in it. Ivan Muller, Dirk Muller, Tavano still in it. But we're back under a full course yellow once again. So, literally, we were under green flag racing conditions for, what, 30 seconds? Toqueenie was one lucky boy. Look at him. He gets up on two wheels, doesn't roll over, and because he's on his wheels, because he's actually touching the ground, he is saved. But, um, well, there's more chaos going on behind him. Right, I want to see if I can get into the mindset of Gianni Morbidelli, the guy who was battling with me for the race lead, and the guy who very nearly took me out, actually, but... He tries to make a move down the inside, to be fair there is the space. Yeah, and he completely clouded to me as he went over, took out a lot of spectators and... Well, now he's stuck. Now he's stuck behind a Goodyear sign and behind a fence like everyone else. Right then, one final look at what brought out the safety car for the second time this race. Rickard Rydell, one of the touring car drivers I've heard of. And look at that, I've counted, that is two and a half rolls he's done there. And, well I mean he's... He's out by the spectators' cars. He's basically parked his car with the spectators. That's how far away from the track he is. Right then, so away we go. Green flag racing conditions. Unfortunately, this race is already derailed, to be honest. I mean, it's a five-lap race that's now turned into a ten-lap race. The safety car will probably come out again at some point. 26 people started this race. There's only 11 people still left running. And I am about to run out of fuel. I may be leading the race, but it's because... Well, I haven't come into the pits. Partly because I didn't really realise that I was running out of fuel. I mean, when I selected a five-lap race and fueled up for seven laps, I thought that would be enough. But how was I supposed to... I mean, how was I supposed to expect that a five-lap race was going to turn into a ten-lap race? Right, so I'm just coasting around out here on my own. Nicola Larini's about to pass me because I want to see if I can coast it back to the pits with the fuel I've got left. But the full course yellow has been deployed yet again. Right, well Michael Schumacher still left running, so is Lorini, so is Yvan Muller by the looks of it. Right, I really hope I can make it back to the pit. So, this five lap race has turned into a ten lap race, but because the safety car's coming back out, I can only assume it's going to now become at least an eleven lap race, because every lap that the safety car is out for, it adds on a lap to the total race distance, which is why well, the race distance has doubled. Zulo's either coming to the pits or retired because he's not moving, so... I'm in 6th, which is brilliant. 6 out of 26 would be phenomenal under normal circumstances, but... I mean, well, I'm last of the runners, I think. Oh no, I've lost it. And recovered it! That was brilliant! Bearing in mind that this happened under a full course yellow behind a safety car. That was quite stylish. Right, green flag racing conditions. I'm nowhere near the start finish line. But amazingly, I've had a look at the people left running. Michael Schumacher, uh, Yvan Muller. Amazingly, pretty much every single manufacturer still has a car left running. Apart from Skoda. But there's a BMW, there's a Volvo, I'm in the Audi. So, pretty much every car company amazingly is still represented in some form. I'm not doing Audi much justice though to be honest because we're in... well 4th out of 6 is okay I guess. Right hang on, oh no other people have gone, that's Michael Schumacher who's helplessly trying to find an exit to that fence. There is no exit so Michael Schumacher has gone. So that means... please don't tell me there's just 3 runners left, is it... is it not just... it's just Yi Van Muller, myself and Zanardi. Well, what's the point of running the rest of this race? The only good thing I can say is, because there's only three runners left, I don't think the safety car will come back out. Well, I basically just ran off the road there. I mean, that was... I'm desperately trying to pull away from Zanardi. He's much quicker than me. Pretty much all of the AI drivers are quicker than me, but... Um, I may as well just retire into the pits, to be honest, because there's nothing I can do at this point. Oh, no, please don't tell me no. Yvan Muller, he's gone over the fence. He was leading. He was leading. I mean, he was unchallenged. And he's he's retired. He's gone. I mean, I mean, there's no one near him. I mean, if you're making an overtake and this happens, fair enough. But he was just on his own. No one even close to him. And he's gone. 
Well, how ridiculous is that? Well, would you look at this? A BMW 3 Series being driven by Alessandro Zanardi. He's going to come across the line to win the Dutch Grand Prix here in Zanvoort, the 1965 Zanvoort track. And Zanardi, he's won it! Get in there for Zanardi! That's brilliant, apart from the fact he hasn't technically beaten anyone. Oh, you're... Please, Zanardi, please. I, just, I want one car to properly finish. As in, I want someone to return to the pits to be able to stand on the podium and celebrate. Because everyone else is either in the pit lane or is stuck up behind the fence. But, um, I mean, it's hard to congratulate Zanardi when... Well, it's hard to congratulate a winner when they just ram into a fence like that. But let's just recap on this. This was meant to be a 5-lap race that turned into a 12-lap race. 26 cars started, technically only one has finished, I could get back in my car and finish to be honest. But 26 started, one finished, we started with 5 laps, we ended with 12 laps, and everybody made the same mistake around the same corner, rolling over the fence, they retired by default purely because they couldn't get back on the track, and the safety car came out 3 times in a race that was only meant to be 5 laps long but turned it to 12 laps long, I mean... Whichever way you look at it, this race was completely and utterly berserk. Right, you're kidding. I gave my AI driver one job, one job, and he rolled it over the fence. Oh, I've beaten Muller. I've just about done a few more feet in this race than Muller. There you go, we'll stop the car there. There you go, technically, technically, I finished second. I mean, we saw the Formula 1 race, the 1998 Formula 1 car race, and that was berserk. They all went mad once the race ended. This race was completely insane from the moment it started to the moment it ended. And in fact, it ended seven laps later than it should have done. So, I mean, if that doesn't explain how batshit insane this race was, I don't know what will. Well, what a way to end off this video. We've had Formula 1 car parts flying everywhere. We had an ETCC race, which broke every single rule possible to be honest I don't know what happened how it happened how it was allowed to happen but it did happen and we're gonna end off with I mean this was the mod I was expecting to be weird that's the things the F1 car mod was just you know as standard I'm an F1 YouTuber if I don't put an F1 car in the video at some point the video will get half as many views so I had to put F1 cars in but also it was requested ETCC I was expecting to be slightly mad these are the cars I was expecting to have an exciting race in, but, I mean, we've already had all of our excitement, so this is going to be, what, comic relief? I don't know, but it's going to be something. Well, look at this. This is a sight to behold. And, in fact, we've already got someone who's braving it out there already. Jeez, he's a braver man than me. But, um, yeah, I'm not even going to bother with practice or qualifying because... Futile is the word that comes into mind. It will be completely futile. So we'll just head straight on into the race and see what happens. But realistically, I'm not expecting it to go well for me. Oh no, away we go. Well, actually, things are going well already. I've overtaken someone, I believe. But I just don't really want to use the steering wheel. Well, I've twitched it a bit. It's going all right so far. But we've got a corner coming up. I don't know how he's been able to pass me. He's wobbling around as well. I mean... No, how's this going to go? Well, they're all doing fine. I don't know how. How on earth do they do that? Yeah, I thought this was going to be the case. I thought... Well, I thought this was either going to be complete comedy or they were going to absolutely thrash me and it's the latter. Because I just don't see how they're going around a corner, well, that quickly. Never mind at all, to be perfectly honest. Because we'll have a try around here. Actually, that one went quite well. Yeah, but that corner didn't go quite so well. I'm just going to see if I can watch what they do around this corner because I don't understand sort of the technique. Is it just full throttle in? Maybe, because they're just... I think they're just riding on the bodywork. Which begs the question, how on earth are they getting any turning or grip? Because that's what I'm struggling to get. But I think they're just leaning on the bodywork. Oh, Rodney Trotter's gone. Okay, and another one's gone. I mean, I was going to try and see if I could look at these guys to try and get any tips, but seemingly 
they're not particularly great at this either, to be honest. No, that no, they're really not that good at this at all. Right, I want to have another look at what on earth just happened there. Right then, let's have a proper look at what on earth just happened. So they're going round this right hander, and they all simultaneously lose control. I mean, look at that! I amazingly, I think the photographer wasn't actually run over during that, but. There was like a Mexican wave, they all started waving around at the same time, just... But just how? I mean... They were able to keep it pointing relatively in the right direction, and none of them rolled over. What on earth is going on? Oh no, someone's gone! He's gone, he actually... Well, he didn't quite roll over, but... Oh no, there's been an accident! There's been quite a big crash there. I mean, amazingly, no real damage, but the, the safety cars come out. I mean, this is... Oh, even the, even the lead is having a bad time. The lead is upside down! And once again, that photographer, he stood in a very stupid place, but still unscathed. Well, look at this. This is just a ridiculous spectacle. Look at the safety car. This might be the only race in history where the safety car is quicker than the actual cars competing in the race. Right then, so I just saw the end of this Regal Supervan. It was rolling down a hill, upside down on its roof. So how did it even get into this situation? Oh well, just like that. In fact, actually there was contact between another Regal Supervan, which was also on its roof. And yet, this is what I saw. Careless. I'm mean, sure you can't really swerve out of the way in this three-wheeled van for fear of rolling over, but still... Wow, that was quite a series of events. Right, so I've got an idea. I'm going to set the AI strength, which is the speed of the AI, up to the maximum 120%, just to see just quite how fast they go, and also just to see if anything interesting happens. That's the only reason I'm doing it. I'm not really interested in how fast it can go. I just want to see if we can see even more chaos and action and drama than we've already seen during this mod. Nearly 60 miles an hour. Yep, 63 miles an hour heading towards the first corner, and... <laughs> well, yeah, that's um, yeah, pretty much exactly what I expected. It's like driving jelly, is what it looks like, to be honest. But yes, Rodney Trotter, he's lost the lead to Rodney Trotter. Which begs the question, why are they all called Rodney Trotter? Like, I understand, obviously, it's a reference to um, to Only Fools and Horses. But, I mean, I'm sure other people drove this van. What about Del Trotter? Or Derek Trotter, I guess. What about... What about Denzel? What about Traeger? What about, um... What about Boise? I'm sure at least one of those guys must have driven this van at some point, surely. Right, the leader's gone. He was all on his own, just got out of shape, and he's gone. Completely. Yeah, no, they're pushing these cars too hard. I mean, sure, I am telling them to, but yeah, no, this is... This is too much. This is way too much at this point. Yeah, no, we've gone too far this time. Definitely. Look at that. That, that'd be worse than seasickness being in there. Imagine being a passenger. Right, I think the final thing I'm going to get in this video is a first person perspective on what it's like to drive these Regal Supervans too fast. I mean, this is just... I mean, it's all going on ahead. Yeah, look at that. Look at the chaos there. But then, just look at this. That's what you have to do to try and maintain control. I mean, I, I just don't have the reflexes or the... The sort of sixth sense. I'm pretty certain you need a sixth sense to be able to do this because this is, it's just, I, I don't understand how it's possible. I will leave you guys off here and I'll see you guys next time for whatever video I put out next. But it won't be on R Factor because this is the final R Factor video I plan to do for quite a while at the very least. Because I've exhausted all of my ideas on R Factor for the time being. But yes, anyway guys, I'll see you then.